Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about a very, very fascinating hidden hero, hidden hero of Dungeons and Dragons. The hidden hero of Dungeons and Dragons is Lorraine Williams. She is the woman who who saved Dungeons and Dragons in 1986. Let's talk about Lorraine Williams. Okay, so Lorraine Williams saved Dungeons and Dragons from insolvency. <laughs> In um, in 1986, in my opinion. All right, so let's let's get into this. Let me give you the, the history here. Okay, really fascinating history about the rise and fall of Gary Gygax from within Dungeons and Dragons. In 1973, Dungeons and Dragons is funded by Gary Gygax for four thousand dollars, a thousand dollars of his own money, a thousand dollars of Don Kay's money, two thousand dollars of Brian Bloom's money. Okay. By 1986, 13 years later, unlucky number 13, uh, uh, <laughs> Gary Gygax resigns as uh, resigns from resigns completely from um, TSR, right? Cutting his creative and his commercial input, direct input into Dungeons and Dragons. After only 13 years, he's out. Okay. Now, how did Lorraine Williams? Save Dungeons and Dragons in 1986. Okay, so right now, a, a lot of people are. I, I really am fascinated by a ton of uh, new Dungeons and Dragons, new and old Dungeons and Dragons players. Who are like, I'm over on the indie scene and I'm playing indie games. I don't play that lame Dungeons and Dragons that you guys play. I play the cool stuff, right? And the reason why is I don't give my money to Big Hasbro, right? Now here's the issue, right? If you say that, if you're one of these people, God bless you. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have everybody in the hobby, right, who's in the hobby because the hobby needs to grow. I just want to get the numbers higher, but you are so wrong. So one, the entire tabletop role-playing game industry is less than $150 million a year, right? It's never been proven to be even more, even larger than that. ICV2 put the number at about $100 million a few years back. There's so little evidence on, on, on how much the industry is worth. But I'll tell you right now, printing books and selling them as tabletop role-playing games ain't nobody's path to, to, to rag, you know, ain't nobody's path to riches. The entire tabletop role-playing game industry is massively small, okay? So with that said, basically, Dungeons & Dragons is such a niche product, it is always on the verge of, it. in its 47-year history, it has frequently been on the verge of insolvency or death by insolvency death by irrelevancy, okay? And by the way, if you ain't paying attention, Dungeons and Dragons is a big IP property and there are lots of big IP properties that are constantly in threat of death by insolvency, death by irrelevancy, okay? Now, here's the issue and some of the biggest, some of the biggest, the app, so Marvel, they're crushing it right now. Everybody loves Marvel stuff. They're winning the world, right? Star Wars, very close to death by death by irrelevancy. The last sequel was very, very poorly received, and even the new Mandalorian show has massive problems and may not see a third season. Okay, death by irrelevancy is a very real thing. Okay, so uh, in addition to that, uh, Star Trek, right? That thing was crushing it for years. Now it's behind a paywall. Nobody can really watch. Star Trek and Star Trek Discovery is reportedly so bad that people who even have access to it really don't care much to watch it, right? Um, you know, Star Trek Picard is out, but who's seen it, right? It's behind this super high paywall. Like, death by irrelevancy is very real. Harry Potter, right? When are we going to get the third Fantastic Beats movie? Who knows? Half the half the stars aren't even going to be available. Like to you know to start, there are major star stars and available that have major problems. Death by irrelevancy, and so this idea that Dungeons and Dragons is just going to sail on right to success, and that and that people can ignore it, you know, and be oh, I'm not giving my money to Big Hasbro. No man, it needs everybody supporting it. It's still super small. It's still super frail, and I can't tell you how many times in history, at least two, right? And I I would suspect. It's maybe as high as five different times within 47 years where uh, Dungeons and Dragons was a hair's breadth away from being insolvent or, irre or irrelevant, okay? In 1986, here, here's the flow. 1973, uh, Gary Gygax funds D&D, &D, right, with two partners. 
1981, uh, he is sent, uh, 19, <laughs> 1981, uh, Gary Gygax is sent by, uh, by, by the Bloom brothers, Kevin Bloom and, Ron, and Brian Bloom to Hollywood to get movie deals, right? At the same time, the bank creditors for TSR are like, the books are so bad, we are insisting on three independent directors on the board, right? D&D is doing well, they're selling well, but, but the management of the company is so poor that its bank creditors don't have confidence in the board, right? And, and, and put tons of members onto the board, right? Um, so, and then at this point, uh, Gary Gygax continues to fight with Dave Arneson, his co-creator, and continues to fight with his, with, with the people who helped fund him the game, fund the game for him, right? So much that in 1985, Gary Gygax brings in Lorraine Williams to be the co, the co manager to be the company manager with the idea that she will help him get power over Dungeons and Dragons and stop it from being sold, Right? I, um, and actually, that that happened in 1980. He brings her in in 19, yeah, I think in early 1985. Months later, she sides with Kevin Bloom and Brian Bloom, and buys the controlling interest in TSR. And then a year later, when uh, Gary Gygax realizes he has no power over his own game, right? Uh, he then loses. He then leaves TSR on his own and settles all disputes with TSR by the end of the year. Okay, Lorraine Williams now has the controlling factor, has the controlling interest in TSR, is its president and CEO, and is able to make the bank creditors happy. She's able to keep the game solvent. Right, Lorraine Williams saved the game from Gary Gygax, right? And from Kevin and Brian Bloom. And and Gary Gygax cared deeply about, about the rules of the system, but kept his eyes closed to a lot of business factors that could have, that, that essentially made, made sure that he lost control, right? He thought he could be a commercial master and a creative master at the same time. He was wrong, right? And then... Uh, and allowed, you know, debt to grow, right, to the point where Dungeons and Dragons was at the point of insolvency. And make no mistake, at this point in 1986, Dungeons and Dragons has major competitors, right, who are more than willing to step up and take the take the number one slot in TTBRGs and make sure that Dungeons and Dragons is forgotten forever. Lorraine Williams rides in on a white horse, gains commercial control of Dungeons and Dragons. And then, right, points it in the right, safe direction to make sure it gets into the very, very good guardianship hands of um, of Hasbro Games, Wizards of the Coasts, in 1999, right? And uh, actually, I think Wizards of the Coast buys it in 97. Hasbro buys it from Wizards of the Coast in 1999. And none of that would have been possible without, without Lorraine Williams. Gary Gygax made the mistake of thinking that he could be a commercial master and a creative master. He was 100% wrong. He was not capable of doing that, right? And under his own guidance, there is a distinct possibility that Dungeons and Dragons would have become insolvent. Lorraine Williams, Lorraine Williams, right? There's a lot of talk that there isn't enough representation in Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons' true hidden hero right, is Lorraine Williams, who saves the game in 1986, and makes sure that it will be there 11 years later to sell to Wizards of the Coast, she protected it, she guarded it, right, she healed it the way a cleric heals the members of his party, Lorraine Williams is the hidden hero of Dungeons and Dragons, that's my opinion, what do you think, who do you think the true hidden, who do you think are the hidden heroes of Dungeons and Dragons? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful, wonderful millennium.